Imagine this moment, an ordinary day, the world outside just waking up, everything calm and familiar. You're going about your day, maybe making tea in your kitchen, maybe driving to work or just scrolling through your phone at home, when suddenly, your phone blares an alert, shattering the routine. This isn't a weather warning, it's not a test, it's a nuclear emergency, something you hoped you'd never see. Panic is your enemy, it clouds your judgment and wastes precious seconds you can't afford to lose, but you won't panic. You'll take a breath, steady yourself, and act with purpose. Your survival, your very life, depends on what you do in the next few moments. The first 60 seconds are absolutely critical. Every tick of the clock matters. Don't run outside. Don't try to drive away, no matter how strong the urge to escape. The immediate threat isn't just the blast itself. It's the radioactive fallout that follows, invisible and deadly. Fallout is toxic dust and ash, carried for miles on the wind, settling everywhere, contaminating everything it touches. Your mission is clear, get inside the most solid building you can find. Brick or concrete walls are your best defense. If you can, head for a basement or the center of a large building. The deeper and more shielded, the better. Every wall, every layer between you and the outside world adds another shield of protection. Move fast, but don't lose your head. Forget about grabbing supplies for now. Shelter is your only priority in these first moments. If you're in a car, pull over immediately and get into a sturdy building. Don't waste time searching for the perfect spot, just get inside. Cars offer almost no protection from radiation. The metal and glass are no match for fallout. At home, head for the basement or a windowless room in the center of the ground floor. The more distance from outside walls, the better. Pile up mass, concrete blocks, bricks, books, even heavy furniture between you and the outside. Every bit helps. Think like a survivor. Scan your surroundings, find the most protected spot, and get there now. Don't hesitate. Every second you spend exposed increases your risk. Move with urgency. Once inside, stay away from windows and doors. Close curtains and blinds to add another layer. The initial blast can shatter glass for miles, sending shards flying and letting in radiation. These are weak points. Avoid them. Get low to the ground, behind something solid if you can. The lower you are, the more protection you have. If you're with others, guide them calmly. Your actions set the tone for everyone. Your clear head is hope for everyone around you. Stay strong and help others stay focused. You're taking control, making smart, life-saving decisions in the face of chaos. This isn't the end, it's the beginning of your survival journey. You've already taken the most important step. You have what it takes to see this through. Determination and quick thinking are your greatest tools. Keep your wits about you. Follow the plan. Trust yourself. You can do this, even when it feels impossible. Survive the first minute and you've already beaten the odds. The hardest part is over, and you're ready for what comes next. Now that you're safely inside, away from the chaos outside, let's talk about the real threat you're facing. Nuclear fallout, the invisible danger that lingers after a blast. You can't see, smell, or taste it, but it's deadly, and it can be all around you without warning. Fallout is radioactive dust and debris, carried by the wind and settling everywhere on streets, rooftops, and even on your clothes if you were outside. The real danger comes from gamma rays, tiny, invisible bullets of energy that can pass through walls and your body, damaging cells and DNA, making you sick or worse. The more exposure you have, the higher your risk of radiation sickness, which can strike quickly or take days to appear. Here's the good news. Fallout radiation decays rapidly, losing its strength much faster than you might expect. The most intense radiation is in the first few hours after fallout arrives, when it's most dangerous to be outside. After just seven hours, radiation drops by 90%, making it much less deadly. After two full days, it's down by 99%. That's a huge difference, and it's why waiting matters. This is called the 7-10 rule. Every sevenfold increase in time cuts radiation by a factor of 10, making your shelter time even more valuable. Your shelter is a temporary fortress, shielding you from the invisible threat outside. You don't have to stay there forever, just long enough for the danger to fade and the world outside to become safer. Stay sheltered for at least 24 to 48 hours to avoid the most lethal radiation, and listen for official updates on your radio. Every hour you spend inside increases your chances of survival, so keep busy and stay calm. Time is on your side, let it work for you and remember that every minute counts. Patience is a survival tool. Use it to your advantage. Resist the urge to leave early. Wait out the worst. Don't risk exposure by stepping out too soon. The longer you stay protected, the safer you'll be. Trust the process and know you're doing the right thing. 
Survival is a waiting game. Your patience and caution are your best allies. In a nuclear emergency, remember three words, time, distance, shielding. These are your survival mantra, time. The longer you stay sheltered, the weaker the radiation gets. Get inside quickly and stay put, especially for the first few days. Don't get impatient, don't go outside. Time is your ally, distance. The further you are from fallout particles, the safer you are. Fallout settles on the ground and rooftops. Put as much space as possible between you and those surfaces. Basements are ideal, the center of a multi-story building is next best. Maximize your distance from contaminated surfaces. Shielding dense materials block radiation. Concrete, brick, packed earth, these are your best shields. Wood and drywall help, but more mass is better. Pile up books, furniture, water containers, anything heavy, around your shelter. The more layers, the less radiation gets through. Build your armor strong. Time, distance, shielding, repeat it. Every decision you make should reinforce these three principles. They're simple, but they save lives. Make them your mantra. Act with purpose. Outsmart the invisible danger. Survive. Your home is now your fortress. In an emergency, the place you know best becomes your shield against the outside world. You don't need a bunker, just smart use of what you have. With a little planning, any home can become a safe haven. Find the safest spot, below ground is best or a windowless room in the center of the lowest floor. The more distance and barriers between you and the outside, the better. Bathrooms, closets, or pantries work well. Small enclosed spaces are easier to reinforce and keep secure. Once you've chosen your safe room, reinforce it. Block windows, seal doors, and make sure there are no gaps. Move heavy furniture and bookcases against the walls to add extra mass and protection. Fill them with books or dense items. The denser the material, the more shielding it provides from radiation or debris. Pile mattresses, boxes, or bags of dirt and water containers around you. Use anything heavy and solid to create barriers. Every inch of extra material adds protection. Layer up as much as possible, even if it feels excessive. Shield the ceiling if you're not underground. Fallout settles on the roof. Overhead protection is just as important as the walls. Pile things on the floor above your shelter if possible. The more layers between you and the outside, the safer you'll be. Think in layers. Outer walls, inner walls, and your improvised shields. Each layer increases your chances of staying safe. Bring essentials. Water, food, first aid kit, radio, flashlight, and a bucket with a lid for a toilet. Don't forget extra batteries and any medications you need. Make your space livable, but prioritize safety. Comfort helps, but protection comes first. You may be here for 48 to 72 hours or longer. Prepare to stay put until it's truly safe to leave. Comfort is secondary. Protection is everything. Stay focused and remind yourself why you're here. Adapt and overcome with what you have. Creativity and resourcefulness can make all the difference in a crisis. You've turned an ordinary space into a life-saving shelter. That's survival. You're ready. You've done what it takes to protect yourself and your loved ones. If you were outside after fallout began, you may be contaminated. Before entering your shelter, decontaminate. Remove outer clothing carefully, don't shake it. Seal clothes and shoes in double plastic bags, away from your living area. Wash thoroughly with soap and water, shower if possible. Don't use conditioner, it can trap radioactive particles in your hair. If no shower, use wet cloths to clean exposed skin, hands, face, and hair. Wipe eyelids and blow your nose to remove particles. Put on clean clothes stored inside. Decontaminate every person and pet that was outside. This step is crucial. Don't skip it. You're creating a clean zone. You've kept the danger out. That's a victory. Once sheltered and decontaminated, focus on water and food. Water is your top priority. Your home's pipes, hot water heater, and toilet tank, not bowl, are safe sources. Turn off your main water valve to prevent contamination. Collect water in clean containers. Food in sealed containers, cans, jars, boxes, fridge, and freezer is safe. Eat perishables first, then freezer, then pantry. Ration food, one small meal a day if needed. If you run out of stored water, outside sources may be contaminated. Let water stand to settle particles, pour off the clear top, filter through dense cloth, and boil to kill germs. Don't eat food exposed to fallout. Use what you have wisely. Survival is about resourcefulness. Stay hydrated, stay nourished, you can last longer than you think. Prioritize safety over comfort. You're prepared. Air can carry fallout particles inside. Make your safe room as airtight as possible. Turn off fans, AC, and heating systems. 
Close and lock all windows and doors. Seal cracks with duct tape or plastic sheeting. Cover vents and openings. You want a sealed box, but not completely airtight. For ventilation, cover a small opening with damp towels or blankets to trap dust. Don't worry about oxygen. Most rooms have enough for days if you're resting. If it gets stuffy, briefly unseal the door to exchange air, then reseal. Balance safety with the need to breathe. You're managing your environment. Every layer of protection counts. Information is as vital as water. Power and internet may be down. You'll need a battery-powered or hand-crank radio. Tune to emergency broadcasts for updates and instructions. Listen briefly every hour to conserve batteries. If you have a hand-crank radio, you're in good shape. Save flashlight and phone batteries. Use only when needed. If you have a family communication plan, trust it now. Texts may get through when calls won't. For now, focus on receiving information. Your radio is your lifeline. It will tell you when it's safe to emerge. Stay informed. Knowledge is survival. Survival isn't just about the first 72 hours. It's about what comes next. After a few days, radiation drops dramatically, but caution is still key. Listen to official broadcasts for updates on safety and radiation levels. When safe, start cleaning your living space. Wipe surfaces with damp cloths to remove dust. Clean one room at a time to minimize exposure. When you finally emerge, stay vigilant. Avoid areas where fallout may have collected, ditches, building foundations. Don't eat local plants or animals until authorities say it's safe. If possible, move to a designated community shelter. Follow official routes. Recovery will be slow, but you've survived the worst. Preparation is your greatest asset. Build a disaster kit, make a family plan, and share this knowledge. Don't wait for disaster. Prepare now. You have the strength and know-how to face the unthinkable. Stay prepared. Stay vigilant. Stay alive.